Today we're going to do a comparison between the Tamron 28-75mm f2.8 VXD G2 and the Sigma 24-70mm f2.8 DG DN Art Lens. The Sigma came out in 2019, the Tamron 2021. Does age make a difference? And I would say probably my hair isn't magically growing back. <clears throat> this comparison is extensive, chapters provided for your convenience, and for the sake of the algorithm, hit the like button. I need all the help I can get. My face was inherited. It was not my choice. Let's get started with build and handling. Starting off at the bottom, both lenses have a weather sealing gasket as well as full internal sealing, making both lenses dust and moisture resistant. They both have a programmable focus hold button. They both have great ergonomics. They're solid, grippy, and not too small, according to my wife. Moving on to the differences, the Tamron has a USB-C, which can be used for firmware updates. The Sigma has a zoom lock, which automatically unlocks when you turn the zoom wheel. Very convenient. The Tamron offers Tamron lens utility. More on that later. The Sigma has an autofocus manual focus switch and a lockable hood. I should mention that the Sigma has a dust issue on older copies. So if you're looking to buy, I would caution buying secondhand for this particular model. As far as I know, all the latest copies do not have this dust issue. The Tamron on the surface looks a bit vanilla, but it does have a lot of control like my mother-in-law. Tamron lens utility allows you to change the direction of the manual focus, infinity focus, aperture control, AB focus pulls, and you can even set focus transition speed. This is not to say that Tamron wins in the feature department because Sigma does offer more physical switches, which you may prefer. So I'll call this a draw. Sony cameras have such good autofocus. Are these lenses the exception or the rule? Let's have a look. The Sigma uses a stepper motor and the Tamron uses a linear focus motor. Does it make a difference? In my opinion, I couldn't tell a difference between the two. It could have been the focal length, 24 is kind of wide, 70 is not that long and hard to focus with. So while on paper, the Tamron claims to have a more aggressive autofocus system, but for its range, maybe it's not needed. Both were silent for video, fast, responsive, basically like OEM lenses. I consider this a draw. Does the age gap matter? Let's have a look at sharpness. Yes, they are different focal lengths and we're gonna compare them anyways. The Tamron is at 28, Sigma is at 24. This is wide open. Both are pretty sharp in the center. When it comes to mid frame, I would say it's the same. The Sigma has good amount of detail here. It's more magnified on the Tamron going towards the edges. And this is where I would say that the Tamron performs slightly better, but it's not by a whole lot. As you can see, it is starting to blur on both of the lenses. Moving to the sharpest aperture at 5.6. And I, I would say this is where the Tamron has the lead. It, it does seem to have better sharpness, a little bit more detail. I, I mean, it's magnified, so it's not really fair, but I do see a little bit of smearing compared to the Tamron. Moving to the mid frame. And at this point, they're fairly comparable. Good detail. And back to the center, good detail on both of them. This is at f5.6. Now to the shared 35 millimeters at f2.8, and they are both great. Mid frame. Again, both lenses are great wide open. I could say that there's a this tiny bit of softening starting to happen with the Sigma. And at the edges, yes, the Sigma definitely softens quite a bit. Let's see how it performs at f5.6. And this is at the max sharpness and the Sigma does catch up. The details are still better on the Tamron. Moving to 50 millimeters, here's the center. I could say that the Tamron is significantly sharper. This branch, they're both in the shade. However, this one's slightly blurry. We move towards the mid frame. And as you can see, this is just not as crispy as the Tamron. For the Sigma, it's a little bit soft. And if we look at the brick detail, Tamron is clearly in a different league. Moving to F5.6. 
and i would say that the sigma is still behind so when it comes to fo longer focal length at 50 millimeters uh, the tamron is considerably better at the edges when it comes to the mid frame it's just a little bit better it is definitely better but the lead drops to a little bit and when it comes to the center yeah uh the tamron is better it, sigma doesn't catch up here moving to 75 for the tamron 70 for the sigma if we're looking at the shaded areas right over here this cactus detail I, the tamron is clearly better Going towards the mid frame, I would say the Sigma has a small advantage. If you look at this detail in this fine grass, the, the Tamron just doesn't have it. The Sigma holds up going towards the edges and the Tamron is just not as crispy on the edges. You can see by this text and uh, the brick detail <laughs> at 5.6, things change a lot. They are fairly comparable. And now looking at this grass detail, yes, it has a lot more detail at this point. And yeah, they are fairly comparable. The Tamron gives you a slightly higher magnification. You can see everything's just a little bit larger. And back to the center, they are fairly comparable. So to sum it up, the Tamron has a slight advantage wide open at nearly every focal length, except for 75 millimeter where it lags on the edges. Stop down, uh, I would say the Tamron has an advantage on every focal length except for 75 where it does catch up winner in this category is the tamron historically sigma has fantastic bokeh can the tamron catch up in this scenario let's have a look close up at the wide end it's not so evident however you can see that the bokeh is slightly busy on the sigma on the outside Moving to full body and this goes away. The bokeh becomes smooth with both lenses. Going to 35 millimeters close up and look at the edges. The Sigma is slightly busy. However, the Tamron is quite clean. When you move to full body, the problem goes away. Both lenses look very clean in this scenario. 50 millimeters close up. The bokeh looks okay in the center. However, as you move towards the edges, it can get a little bit busy on the Sigma. The Tamron stays nice and true. At 70 millimeters, this is where things change. The Sigma is looking really clean as well as the Tamron. So the Tamron is good throughout the range. Sigma has slightly busy bokeh from 24 to 50. However, at 70, it improves a lot. Winner in this category is the Tamron. Next up is Chromatic Aberration and Loca, aka Boca CA. At the wide end, the Sigma has a little bit less CA, it still has some. It's a little bit less, better controlled. Towards the 40 millimeter mark, I would say both are fairly comparable. At the telephoto end, both clean up fairly well. This is in the far corners for each lens and I would say Sigma has a slight advantage when it comes to CA. Loco at the wide end is fairly well controlled with both lenses. At the telephoto end, you can see some purpling and uh, with the Sigma, it's a little bit cleaner. So when it comes to Loca and CA, Sigma has a slight advantage when in this category. Next up is Flare and Sunstars. How do these lenses behave? Let's have a look. Here is the flaring and what you can notice is that the Sigma has a little bit more blob forms than uh, the Tamron. The Tamron is fairly clean. The amount is minimal and I don't see it all that offensive. Just something to note. The Tamron just performs a little bit better here in pretty much all focal lengths. As you can see, as we get towards the longer focal lengths, it's still performing better. There is a small piece of flaring, but it is very contained. Overall, both lenses have a high level of flare resistance. However, the Tamron is better. Moving to the Sun Stars. The Tamron has nine and the Sigma has 11 aperture blades. And what makes the difference is not the blades per se, but I would say that the Sun Stars are more pointy and thin on the Tamron. While the Sigma is a little bit thicker and less defined, 
I like the look of the Tamron more, it's more refined. The flaring behaves differently in both lenses. The Tamron has more of a ghosting, while the Sigma has more a blobbing type flare. This is somewhat of a subjective category, so you may like the Sigma more, I like the Tamron more, and I'm going to declare it winner in this category. For you video folks, now let's compare parfocal performance and focus breathing. Here's the parfocal performance test. The Tamron is almost immediately out of focus. The Sigma is close, however, it starts to get blurry and parfocal performance is all or none to get the job done. Being close is like almost winning the lottery. Aww. At the wide end, both lenses have a moderate amount of focus breathing. However, when it comes to the middle and longer focal lengths, focus breathing is more controlled. I would put it on the low tier. These lenses have okay video features. However, they are not the exception and performance is quite average. I'm gonna call this a draw. For the size queens, this next topic is for you, size and range. Both these lenses are very close in length, 4.6 inches for the Tamron and 4.8 inches for the Sigma. And in practical scenarios, they fit the same bags, which is nice. The difference between width is much greater. Tamron uses 67 millimeter filters and Sigma uses massive 82 millimeter filters, which is much more noticeable in bulk, which can make it feel full sized, unlike most Asians. Tamron comes in at 540 grams and Sigma 835. That's a difference of nearly 300 grams, which can weigh more than some ultra wide primes. So while the size difference is not gigantic, you will feel the difference in weight and the Sigma comes with 24 millimeters for that reason. And you won't need to change lenses as often. I don't think the 24 millimeter at f2.8 warrants 300 grams. So that's where the Sigma loses the weight argument. But the difference between 24 millimeter and 28 millimeter is significant. Winner in this category is the Tamron. Now let's compare the value of these two third party lenses. The Sigma comes in at 1099, the Tamron comes in at 899, and I think the prices are absolutely fair. These are f2.8 constant aperture zooms. And if you're gonna compare two conventional first party lenses like the Sony G Master, this comes in at $2,000 and that's quite common among different brands. With the Sigma, you're paying for 24 millimeters for a price of $200. That's not a lot to ask for. And with the Tamron, you're getting 28 to 75, an extra five millimeters, which is not as much as the wide end being 24. Both lenses have been out for a while and because the Sigma is slightly older, it's gone down as low as 918 according to this price tracker. And the Tamron's gone down to as low as 860. And you may factor price maturity into equation when picking one of these lenses. As for absolute value, you're getting a ton of lens for the money from each manufacturer. It's going to be a tie in this scenario. Final thoughts. It turns out the Tamron is optically superior for the most part. However, is that enough for you to forego the 24 millimeter wide end of the Sigma? 24 millimeters is a sweet spot for many folks. It's on the cusp of ultra wide and it's wide enough that you can vlog with it. Well, this is 28, so it's a little bit tight. You'll definitely feel the difference between 24 and 28 indoors. However, I don't remember a scenario where it was a deal breaker. It's certainly convenient having that extra width, but if that means 300 extra grams, is it worth it? If you're going to pair these lenses with an ultra wide, then it makes more sense to get the 28 to 75 Tamron instead of the Sigma. Having less overlap will mean less excess weight and size. And there's no denying that the Sigma has a better range. 24 is noticeably wider and it comes at the cost of optics, price and size. What do you guys think? It can be argued that the optic discrepancy is too large for the Sigma to compete. However, at the same time, it's a lens that I really enjoy. It's not that much bigger than the Tamron, even though it weighs quite a bit more. And overall, it's just an all-in-one lens that is noticeably wider. Let me know in the comments below which lens is right for you. 
Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, sub, share. See you on the next one. Take care.